Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopeful elect of Israel. You Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian, and Haitians. Got to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. His name is Yahweh, not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Ahia. It's Yahweh. His only begotten son name is Yahweh Shah. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapis Christus, not Yeshia. It's Yahweh Shah. So we gotta give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. Bahashim, Rika Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well. And a sincere salutation to all the occupants. Pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole flelect. And shalom to the Atwaf who are listening and learning, the few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from the GMS Orlando camp, coming at you another lesson in true facts, faith, and edification, another daily edification. Lord's willing, just be edifying. In this lesson, the Lord is destroying two thirds of Israel. I got a few video clips I'm going to play. <clears throat> now the death toll in Babylon the Great, they saying it's 40,000, 40,724 deaths. That's the, that's the death toll as of right now. And who's the destruction coming to? You Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian, and Haitians. The Lord is destroying two-thirds of his people. Now, in every war, in every battle, there's always going to be casualties of war. Okay? There's going to always be casualties of war. Always. And the Lord said he made the world for our sakes. For you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitian sake. So, he's bringing, he's bringing calamity to do what? To kill two-thirds of you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitians. Okay, <clears throat> so this is Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it reads, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord Yahweh, and that's where all you Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indian Haitians are scattered at. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but a third shall be left therein. So the Lord is killing two thirds of you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian Haitians. So they say in the United States right now, total cases is 761, 991 cases in Babylon the Great. And the deaths are 40,000, 40,724. Okay. <clears throat> so, and now they're saying the most deaths is in you uh, African Americans. Okay. You so-called Negroes. Latino, Native Americans, West Indian, Haitians. And we're going to pull that up. So I'm going to play some of this. Lord willing, it's beautiful. fine. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. I'm broadcasting from New York. He's in New Jersey. Here in New York, the coronavirus death toll has nearly reached 5,000. We're spending the rest of the hour with U.S. Congress member Alexandria Casio cortez who represents the neighborhoods that have been called the epicenter of the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic here in New York City, Queens, and the Bronx. Almost a third of the city's COVID-19 cases are in Queens, which has been called the most diverse place in the world. Many of the hardest hit neighborhoods in those neighborhoods are undocumented, working class, working poor. In Elmhurst, Queens, more than two thirds of residents were born outside of the United States. The majority are black and Latinx. Queens has more COVID-19 cases than any other borough, yet it has fewer hospitals than its neighbors, with only three major medical centers. The New York Times reports, Queens has 1.5 hospital beds per 1,000 people, compared to 5.3 in Manhattan. 
Congressmember Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's district also includes Rikers Island Jail, where at least one prisoner has died of complications of COVID-19. Hundreds have uh, tested positive. Rikers currently holds just over 5,000 people, many there for parole violations or serving less than a year for a low-level offense. Many are there in pre-trial detention. They simply don't have money for bail. On Friday, Congressmember Ocasio-Cortez tweeted, quote, COVID deaths are disproportionately spiking in black and brown communities. Why? Because the chronic toll of redlining, environmental racism, wealth gap, etc., are underlying health conditions. Inequality is a comorbidity. COVID relief should be drafted with a lens of reparations, she wrote. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez joins us now. Thank you so much for being with us, Congressmember um, Ocasio-Cortez. Can you start out by talking about your district? We have heard a lot about Elmhurst Hospital, as we should. The doctors and the nurses, like so many around the country, and the sanitation workers in these hospitals are not properly protected. We have not heard as much, and there may be a deep connection here, um, about the community that it serves. In just the last week, I've heard about three men, two Mexican brothers who died in their home, not even in the hospital. Their bodies just recently taken out. A third died in the hospital, but fears of even going to hospitals, knowing what could happen to them, who've been hard-working members of our communities for so many years. Talk about your community. Yes, no, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to, to discuss the actual community surrounding Elmhurst Hospital and Elmhurst Queens. This is uh, one of the most working class and as you mentioned blackest and brownest communities in New York City. It is extraordinarily dense even for New York City. It is a very dense and densely populated community. Um, it's no surprise that you know in, in the wake of this pandemic right after the Trump administration announced its public charge rule which basically said if you are undocumented and seek public services public health care, SNAP, WIC, et cetera, then uh, you will be essentially put on a fast track to either denial of citizenship or outright deportation. And, um, and so now that we have this pandemic and it is hardest hitting in communities that, it, that are heavily immigrant and also with uh, strong historically black communities as well, um, that people are either afraid to go to Alpers Hospital out of the cost or out of um, sheer fear that they will be put in the public charge list. Now, after we pushed the, the Trump administration, we were able to secure um, we were able to secure a confirmation from the administration that they would not uh, they would not refer COVID related cases and and treat them under the public charge rule. But there's so much confusion already that uh, many members are scared to go. Uh, these are the same people who are preparing our food. They're the same people who stock our grocery shelves. They're the same people who deliver our goods. And um, the idea that we can deny them care as though the pandemic will not affect us in greater ways because of that is naive and it's unscientific. And Congress. Well, the reason that is because this is from Ohio, man. This is the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Awashah, man. Okay, because two thirds of Israel got to be put to death, man. Whomever they are, man. That's why we always pray that we are not of that lot, man. Because two thirds of Jake's got to be put to death, man. This is from on high, man. That's why they're getting denied. Now, let me go to this. Real problem. And it's showing up uh, very strongly. In our data on the African-American community, and we're doing everything in our power to address this challenge. It's a tremendous uh, challenge. It's terrible. And provide support to African-American citizens of this country who are going through a lot, uh, but it's been disproportional. Uh, they're getting hit very, very hard. In fact, uh, while we have Tony, here, I'd like to maybe have you come up and address that one, and then I'll continue. But if you could address that, it would be great, Tom, please. Now, let me read this. 
This is Deuteronomy 28. In verse um, 37, it reads, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord, Yahweh, shall lead thee. You see these things going on, man? When you go back into the curses, right? It reads this. It's a, um, I'm just going to get a couple of them. This is Deuteronomy 28. In verse, uh, I'm going to start at uh, 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land where the die go to possess it. Now, this is when we came out of Egypt. Right? To go possess the land of Israel, right? Ham, Canaan, whatever you want to call it. Israel, which it is called. Jerusalem. That is happening now, man. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, man. And now we are in Babylon the Great and around the, in the country around the world, the islands of the sea. Verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever, <laughs> and with the inflammation, and with the extreme burning, and with the sword, and with the blasting, and with the mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Okay? They say, And the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. All these things happen, man. Slavery, right? The transatlantic slave trade. Everything happened to who? You Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitians, man. The Lord shall, let's see. It said, the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Verse 27, the Lord will smite thee with the botch of the Egypt, uh, the, with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart. These things, now go look it up what it means. Blindness and madness, astonishment, emeralds. We know what these is, man. Okay? Back in 37 again. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. This is talking about number of diseases, pestilences, man. It's going to cleave to you, Negro, Latino, Native Americans, man. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a, a particularly difficult problem of an exacerbation of a health disparity. We've known literally forever that diseases like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and asthma are disproportionately afflicting the minority populations, particularly the African Americans. Unfortunately. Now, see, that's one thing they lie about, about you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian Haitians being a minority. You are not the minority. You are the majority. They tell you that in Hosea 1 and 10. Okay, but they use their media to push that we are the minority. We are not the minority, man. The Lord said we are like the stars in heaven, man. Okay, like sand on the beach, man. We cannot be number nor measure. But these devils know <laughs> all these diseases that Jake got, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, they come from the food that we eat, man. They come from our diet, our, our, our diet man. Okay. And these devils know that. That's why I brought out Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And that shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead you. You see, they call you African Americans, Negroes, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and Colombians. And it, you, we are an astonishment, man. 
Look at these, these uh, we got all type of ailments, man. And it's from the stuff that they feeding us, man. GMO foods, chemtrails. Why? Because this is from on high, man. The Lord is doing this, man, to get rid of two-thirds of Israel, like I read the other lesson. He said he 40 years through the wilderness, man. Okay. When you look at the predisposing conditions that lead to a bad outcome with coronavirus, the things that get people into ICUs that require intubation and often lead to death, they are just those very comorbidities that are unfortunately disproportionately prevalent in the African-American population. So we're very concerned about that. It's very sad. It's nothing we can do about it right now except to try and give you the best possible care to avoid those complications. Thank you very much. And Tony, I think you're going to have some pretty accurate numbers over the next few days, right? But they are very, uh, they're very nasty numbers, terrible numbers. I wanted to follow up. You talked about African Americans and how they've been disproportionately affected by the coronavirus. Seems to be, unfortunately. Do you plan on requiring the CDC, uh, any federal agencies or state agents, public uh, public places doing tests, and private companies doing tests to collect that data yep. on the race of the people being tested and the the race of the people being treated and how? Well, we're just seeing tremendous. We're seeing tremendous evidence that. African Americans are affected at a far greater percentage number than other citizens of our country because we're dealing with our country. And we know that. Why? Because Yahweh Bashim Abashah is doing it, man. Because two thirds got to be moved out the way, man. Okay? The Lord say, Amos 9 to 10, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, man. Okay? Two thirds got to be moved out the way, man. So we know that. This is the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shah, man. It has nothing to do with the heathen nations, man. Information out from the White House last night on which coronavirus patients are suffering the worst outcomes. Eamon Javers joins us this morning. He's got more on that front. And good morning, buddy. It's good to see you. Yeah, good morning, Becky. This is an additional aspect of this tragedy that we're just beginning to learn about, which is that African-Americans are among the hardest hit here. Uh, data is just beginning to emerge, so it's still early days. But take a look at this information compiled by the Washington Post overnight. The Washington Post. And just for edification's sake, we are not African Americans, man. Okay? Africa was named after Edomite named Leo Scipios Africanus, and America was named after Edomite named Amerigo Vespucci. We are not African Americans, man. We are Hebrew Israelites. Most reporting that counties that are majority black have three times the rate of infections as counties that are majority white. Those counties have almost six times the rate of deaths and of Chicago's 118 reported deaths. The Washington Post finds that nearly 70% of those people were black. That is uh, way out of proportion with uh, Chicago. And we ain't black neither. We different shades of brown, just for edification's sake. Chicago's general demographic. So something is going on here. Dr. Anthony Fauci, speaking at the White House yesterday, offered his explanation for what we're seeing. Unfortunately, when you look at the predisposing conditions that lead to a bad outcome with coronavirus, the things that get people into ICUs that require intubation and often lead to death, they are just those very comorbidities that are unfortunately disproportionately prevalent in the African-American population. So Becky Anthony Fauci said yesterday, this is a problem that doctors have known about forever, literally, he said. African Americans have higher risk for a lot of these conditions across the board, and those are the very same conditions uh, that make you more likely to have a bad outcome if you get the coronavirus. He said there's nothing they can do about it right now, and they're going to need a lot more science and data to fully understand the problem, but this might be just another piece of how this virus is impacting American society in different ways across different strata. Uh, and that's going to affect uh, the way Americans uh, deal with it uh, and the way scientists have to scramble to solve the problem. Back over you. And you know why they can't do nothing about it? Because it's from the Heavenly Father, man. First Samuel 2 and 6. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Isaiah 45 and 7. Amos 3 and 6, man. This is from on high, man. This is the work of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh man. To do what? To lay two-thirds of Israel desolate, man. This is the judgment. 
And we are becoming an astonishment, man. Well, we've been an astonishment. But now this thing is really hitting hard, man. This is the Lord doing this, man. Because right here in this video, this is talking about so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. West Indian Haitians, man. Okay? That's why this lady from um, Democracy Now did an interview with this lady right here. But she she like an Ephraimite. So, man, I wanted to ask you about this enormous uh, racial and ethnic disparity in the cases and especially in the deaths that are occurring. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, and as Amy mentioned earlier, uh, the areas of Elmhurst, Jackson Heights, and Corona are the, are the epicenter of the epicenter. But uh, the Bronx, a portion of which you also represent, your congressional district stretches out there, uh, has also been hard hit. According to the, as of 1059 last night, according to the tracker that the city a website uh, produces for New York City every day, uh, there were 679 people of Bronx residents who had died of coronavirus. That's Now, this is from April the 7th. These videos that I'm showing, they are from April the 7th, man. Okay? And it's way worse right now. More than twice as many as die have died in Manhattan. Only 302 in Manhattan, even though the Bronx is significantly smaller in population uh, than Manhattan. Uh, and you've got a situation where... Uh, the Bronx is 16% of the population of the city, but it's 24 represents 24% of all the deaths. So we have a situation here where even in Brooklyn, the the areas of Brooklyn where most residents are dying are in the North Brooklyn and the Black and Brown communities. How do you uh, how do you assess the city and the state's response to what is clearly a, a disparate impact of this uh, of this epidemic? Yes, well, as I had mentioned earlier, inequality, environmental racism, these are pre-existing conditions. And when you have a pandemic, similar to what we saw with Hurricane Maria, when you have a, a natural disaster or an event like a pandemic hit communities that have already been ravaged by weakened health systems, weakened infrastructure. The South Bronx is one of the highest childhood asthma rates in the country. When we talk about environmental racism, we're talking about illegal dumping, we're talking about concentrating waste sites and concentrating highways and trucking zones through the poorest communities in the country and the blackest communities and the brownest communities. And so we already have an issue of extreme and acute uh, concentration of respiratory illnesses in the Bronx. Um, that is largely due to the trucking that comes through here, through the environmental in inequalities that come through here. And so when you have uh, when you have the, the Cross Bronx Expressway, which was a notorious project of racism by, uh, by Robert Moses, uh, the way that he tried to concentrate and, and to push these communities and design these communities through, when you have the toll of, of health inequities, um, and on top of that, these are our frontline workers. Where, where you see our frontline workers living are where you see are the same places where you are seeing COVID cases spiking. Black and brown workers are overwhelmingly part of this front line. They are the grocery store workers. They are the delivery workers. They are hospital workers, including janitorial staff. And so when you have this pandemic layer on top of it, when you pair that to the, to the unequal access to care, when you pair that with ratios of um, of hospital beds far lower than more affluent communities, this is what you get. And so when it comes to the city's response, um, it, it's, you know, I, I believe that the city is doing absolutely everything that it can, but we also have to acknowledge that there are two entirely different starting lines that these communities are, are starting with. And so we've been working very hard, but also when we don't push for things like rent and more full rent and mortgage moratoriums, you push these workers to go outside because they feel a pressure to make their rent and they may go out and take work. They may take work under the table um, in order to make ends meet. And so without this economic relief, it, be it also adds to the public health issues that we currently face. After break. Hey, now you see, hey, this coming for you Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indian Haitians, man. The Lord doing this, man. 
If, if Do Dr. Fauci said there's nothing we can do about it right now, is there a longer term fix to the solution? Are they? Are there's nothing we can do, man. Okay, there's nothing we can do, man. That's why you better stay prayed up and have faith, man. You better build your faith up if you got weak faith, man. Okay, the Lord is saying First Timothy two and eight, man. Lift up all holy hands without wrath and doubt, man. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Yahweh. But Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. It's nothing nobody can do, man. Because this is from the Heavenly Father, man. He got this spirit on earth to destroy two thirds of Jake, man. That's why it's happening, man. To get rid of two thirds of Jake's, man. Are they looking at ways to try and tackle this? Well, I mean, longer term, what you would have to do is attack the underlying disparities, right? So, uh, for example, African Americans would be more likely to have a blue collar job, which requires them to travel to work. They don't necessarily have the, the luxury of being able to stay at home uh, and self isolate. They, all of the hypertension, asthma, heart disease, all of those problems that are more prevalent in African American communities due to uh, stress, lifestyle, historical racism, and all, all kinds of other problems. You'd have to attack that cluster of problems in order to really fix this uh, for the next pandemic, whenever we get one. Uh, so that's the scale of the, the challenge here. We're seeing that playing out across the African-American community now. Hmm. I mean, you think about that and you think about the inequality arguments and the issues that arose after the, the, the financial, uh, the, the Great Recession. And, and you start to think that that's going to look like child's play compared to what we're going to see coming out of this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that the, the way this is impacting American society is different across different strata. You talk about the blue collar, white collar divide here. Uh, you're starting to see those strikes or threats of strikes among some workers who are forced to go to work, uh, even under these conditions. You're starting to see the impact on uh, uh, immigrants who are coming in, migrant workers who are coming in uh, to work on farms. Uh, all of those issues, I think, uh, are going to play out here in our politics as well as in our healthcare system. Hey, man, if you Jakes, if you Jakes don't get rid of that, what, that Jesus Christo spirit, man, you're going to be destroyed, man. If you don't come into the full knowledge of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shah, you are going to be destroyed, man. The Lord is going to kill you, man. Okay? Famine or pestilence, man. Or you're going to die by the sword. When you look at being black in America, number one, uh, people unfortunately are more likely to be of low socioeconomic status, which makes it harder to social distance. Number two, we know that blacks are more likely to have diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, and I and many black Americans are at higher risk for COVID. It's why we need everyone to so do their part to slow the spread. It's the U.S. Surgeon General Justice. And that's facts, man. The heightened coronavirus. Why? Because you Jakes would not stop eating shrimp, pork, crabs, and lobster, and scallops, and clams, and oysters, and all that madness. Catfish. You won't stop doing it, man. A bunch of cakes, pies, and cookies, man. So yeah, and then you got you got the enemy spraying chemtrails in the air to help weaken your immune system. Okay. First risk for African Americans. Some states have have released the racial breakdown of cases and deaths, and those numbers show a disturbing trend: a disproportionate number of African Americans being infected with coronavirus and dying. Joining now. Nah. Gotta say this. If this is true, we know everything is from the Most High. Everything is from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shah. We know this. So, we know how Esau Edom play with the numbers. They use the media to control everything. So, we know if this is true, man, which is highly likely that it is. This is from Yahweh Bashima. Everything is from the Most High, man. Everything, man. Esau play with the numbers, right? They all play with the numbers. Just like they say that we are the min uh, we are the minorities, which we isn't the minorities. We 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 ain't the minority. We are the majority. We know that. So they could be playing with the numbers, but yet still, the Heavenly Father is putting in work to get rid of two thirds of Israel, man. Point blank, period.
Joining me to share their expertise in their reporting, Dr. Conroe Jones, the former president of the American Public Health Association, Politico's Laura Barone Lopez, and CNN's Van Jones. Uh, Dr. Doctor, I want to start with you, uh, and I've just put up some numbers. I'll get deeper into them in a moment, but just these side-by-sides. Illinois, African Americans make up 15% of the population. They are 42% of the state's coronavirus deaths. In Louisiana, African Americans make up about a third of the population. Seven in ten. Seven in ten of the deaths in Louisiana. African Americans in Michigan, it's about 14% of the statewide population. More than 40% of the deaths in Michigan from COVID-19 in the African American community. Uh, it's a combination of things, I'm sure. Some, it's the urban density. Some is the disparity in the healthcare systems. Uh, what is your biggest takeaway on why this is happening and what can be done? Ain't nothing can be done, man. <laughs> you, hey. hey. If you don't repent, convert and be healed, man, and seek your how about you, I shot. There's nothing that can be done, man. Nothing, man. It's Amos nine and ten. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. We say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And why do our people say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us? Because that's what they pastors have been telling them for years, man. All the way from the plantation, man. Okay. Matthew 10 and 34, which I always read these scriptures, man. Because the Lord said, what? All the sinners of your people shall die by the sword. If you don't repent, convert and be healed, you're going to die by the sword or pestilence or famine, man. Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I am coming to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword, man. The Lord is not playing no games. With you, Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitians, man. This is Luke 19 and 27. It reads. But those my enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me, man. Okay. The Lord is getting rid of two thirds of you, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian, and Haitians, man. This is Ezekiel. Chapter 9 <clears throat> and verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spread, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin in my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. The Lord is putting judgment in the land, man. <clears throat> this is um Ezekiel. Let me read this one. Ezekiel 7. And 14. And it reads. They have blown a trumpet. Even to make all ready. But none go up to the battle. For the wrath is upon all the multitude. For my wrath. Is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without. And the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field. Shall die with the sword. And he that is in the city. Famine and pestilence. Shall devour him. Okay. So, first of all, we have to be clear that in December 2019, none of us was immune, right? So all of us would should have an equal opportunity of being infected. But what this virus has done is taken away the mask, uh, the veneer, the pull the sheets off of this myth of equal opportunity in this society. So what is happening is that Black folks are getting infected more because they're exposed more. And once infected, they're getting, they're dying more because they have their bodies, our bodies, have borne the burden of chronic disinvestment, active neglect in our community. So when I look at it, it is because of structural racism which puts us in the more forward-facing jobs so that we're more exposed and less valued, don't even have the protection that we need. And this chronic, you know, the residential segregation that turns into 
uh, employment segregation, educational segregation, uh, environmental hazard segregation, all of those insults in our bodies have given us more of these so-called pre-existing conditions. So once we are infected, we have more severe outcomes from the disease. All them false hopes and dreams that you people was looking towards Martin Lucifer Queen for and Jesse Jackass and Al Sharpton, what she just said, none of that came to you people, man. None of that came to you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitians, man. Okay? Just like this guy, Jesse, uh, Jesse Lowry, that died a little while ago, a month ago. Hey, man, you did nothing, man. Why? Because you can't, man. This is from the Most High, man. Ezekiel 6 and 6. In all your dwelling places, the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate. And your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down. Jesus Christos can't save you right now, man. Why not? What's going on? Why, why, why Jesus Christos is not saving you people, man? And your works may be abolished, and a slain shall fall in the midst of you, and you shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Hey, the only ones that don't know the Lord is putting in his work is two-thirds of Israel, man. You like this bug out guy, Carl, what the name is Carl Wright? Tell me he under the new covenant. Hey, he, hey, Jake is bugged out, man. Through. I want you to listen, Van, I want to come to you next. But I want you to listen to the governor of Louisiana who's looking at these numbers and says, as the Dr. Jones just said, uh, this is a horrible thing and we better learn about it as soon as we can. Right now, slightly more than 70% of all of our deaths are among African Americans. Uh, who make up about 32% or so of the overall population of our state. So obviously this is a big disparity and we're going to try to figure out uh, what that is attributable to and what, what we can uh, do about that as, as quickly as possible. Uh, and Van, as you come in, I just want to put the numbers, just Louisiana numbers up side by side because people need to look at the numbers and let them sink in when you look at it. 33% of the population of the state of Louisiana is African American. Seven in ten of the deaths in the state of Louisiana are among African Americans. That's just a more than double your proportion of the population. Uh, when you hear the governor there, Van, uh, I take him at his word that he is very well intended. You also know the history here. We have a crisis. Everybody ramps up. A lot of money gets spent. And then some of the disparities that may have been a major factor in contributing to the crisis, uh, when they're over, they either get forgotten, put aside, or there's not enough resources to deal with them. Well, look, I, I was in conversation with the governor yesterday. Um, I know that he is, is well in, in tension, but here's the reality. Um, we got off on the wrong foot here from a media point of view and from a community point of view. Everybody started saying in the black community, this is a white folks thing. Uh, you're hearing about white folks in nursing homes. You're hearing about uh, white folks who went to China. Uh, and in fact, a rumor got started that black people were literally immune to this disease. That was all over the internet. Hmm. Start off as a joke. People took it seriously. And in fact, you've seen this before with HIV. Oh, HIV, that's just for gay people. I don't have to worry about it. And then it spread everywhere. Hmm. This is a disease. The numbers for the black community are going to be completely different than the numbers coming out of China or Italy because it's an epidemic jumping on top of a bunch of other epidemics already Good. in the black community. Right. You already have an epidemic of high blood pressure, which is lethal if you get this disease. Nobody's saying that. We already have an epidemic of asthma, obesity, etc. In other words, you got to start saying to your black relatives, to your black friends, do you take pills every day? If you take pills every day, are you supposed to? Get your butt in the house and don't come out because you are going to die. Well, I'm not 80 years old. I don't, I'm, I don't know. It's, it's not just age. In our community, it's going to be, are you sick? And black people are underinsured, underemployed, and barely healthy on a good day because of things that were just mentioned. We have to change the discussion. We can't say comorbidities. That doesn't mean anything to the people who are in harm's way. The people who are in harm's way, do you take pills every day? Do you got sugar, diabetes? Do you got pressure, high blood pressure, hypertension? You could die in a week. You cannot be here. You've got to start screaming this to the black community or you're going to have a catastrophe on your hands here. 
uh, and Laura Brown Lopez, uh, some of the politicians are starting to try to get more attention. I want you to listen here to the go governor of Illinois who gets the statistics and, and agrees with Dr. Jones about where it's coming from. Communities of color and particularly black communities in the city of Chicago, suburban Cook County, and cities and towns all across our state disproportionately shoulder the health care conditions that lead to worse outcomes with COVID-19. That's a product of generations of systemic disinvestment. He talks about the generations. Laura, again, I want to show you the Illinois numbers because I just think people need to understand by looking at the numbers and understanding the disproportionality of this. 15% of the population of Illinois is African-American. 29% double the population essentially percentage in the cases. And then 42% of the deaths. Uh, you've been doing a lot of reporting on this issue. Uh, everybody's in crisis. Now, let me read this. Let me bring that back up. This is Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 21. And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged and every vision felleth? That's what two thirds of Israel say. Why? Because I read Amos 9 to 10, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. This is the proverb that two thirds of our people say, man. Oh, ain't nothing going to happen. We like, like the brother said. Oh, Jake thought they was immune to this, man. No, man. This is from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, what is this proverb that ye have in the land of Israel? Saying the days are prolonged and every vision fell up. Tell them, therefore, thus hath the Lord Yahweh power. I will make this proverb to cease. What proverb? That the days are prolonged and every vision fell up? No, man. The Lord said, his word shall come to pass, man. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. What effect? The curses, man. Okay, we are under curses until Yahweh shall come back and redeem his elect, man. It tell you that in Matthew and Revelation 22, man, there shall be no more curse, man, when Yahweh shall return to redeem his elect, man. Until then, we are under the curses, man. Again, but say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. What vision? That the prophets were prophesying the whole time, man. Famine, pestilence, class wars, race wars, martial law, concentration camp, the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. These things are happening, man. And there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination, no more lies, man, within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord Yahweh, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged, for in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it. Say after the Lord Yahweh, Baha'i Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he sealed is for many days to come, and he prophesied. Of times that are far off. Therefore, say unto them, Thus have the Lord Yahweh power, there shall none of my words be prolonged any more. But the words which I have spoken shall be done, say the Lord Yahweh power, man. And it's happening. And it's happening, man. This is Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 20. It reads, Yet hear the word of the Lord Yahweh, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters well, and, and every one her neighbor lamentation. For death is come up into our windows, and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without, and the young men from the streets. Okay? It's happening, man. It is happening, man. It says it had entered into our windows. Into our palaces, man. Well, where you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitians live at, man. It's hitting hard, man. And is Jake repenting and converting? No, man. Why? Because they don't believe. That's why the Lord said this. Zephaniah 1 and 12. 
reads, And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles. Not what? Not Jerusalem today. Over there in Israel. Tell about what you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitians are scattered at. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men and women that are settled on their lees. You don't want to change. They say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. That's what you say. <laughs> but what Isaiah 45 and 7 say, let's read it. Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh, do all these things. Now, it just said in Zephaniah 1 and 12, the Lord don't do good or evil. But he just said he create peace and make evil, man. But you learn that mess from these wacky plantation pork chop bacon bit rib eating pastors, man. That's going to cause you to be put to death. They tell you that in Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. They tell you that in Michael, the third chapter, man. Okay? Is African American. 29% double the population essentially percentage in the cases, and then 42% of the deaths. Uh, you've been doing a lot of reporting on this issue. Uh, everybody's in crisis mode right now, uh, trying to protect their citizens, trying to get their hospitals the supply they need. Uh, do the politicians get it? for the long term, or will this fade when COVID is shoved aside by some other crisis? Hmm. Well, it's really key um, to ensure. And it will be shoved to the side, man, because, hey, the Lord is sending plague after plague, man. He's going to send plague after plague, man. Hey, that's why he said this. <clears throat> Isaiah 42, in verse, um, in verse 9, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And he's doing that, man. He's showing great signs in the heavens, man. Great signs in the earth. Isaiah 46 and verse 8. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am power and there is none else. I am power and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. Come on, man. And it's happening, man. OK, it's happening. They say, hey, until they be until the earth be be um, wasted, man. From who? Two thirds of Israel. He don't care about the heathen nations. Psalm 33 and 11. The counsel of the Lord Yahweh standing forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations, man. And he putting in work, man. The Heavenly Father is putting in work, man. <clears throat> Let me get this. Isaiah 24. And one, behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Okay, that's what the Lord doing, man. The Lord, the land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled for the Lord Yahweh have spoken this word, man. Okay, these things ain't going to go no more, man. Keep going on as normal and bias. Jake thinking things going to continue the way they've been going on. No, man. The Lord said he's going to punish the men that are settled on their leaves, man. You don't want to change? Guess what, man? You shall know it out the death by pain, man. Period. The Lord said, all the sinners of his people shall die by the sword, man. All the sinners of his people shall die by the sword, man. You don't want to change? Those my enemies, which were not that I shall reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me, man. Okay, right now they got, um, <clears throat> they showing hundreds, hundreds defy state orders to say medical experts protest restrictions this is on the news right now man hundreds to five state orders man and they say medical experts protest restriction man that's an uproar of the people man okay and that's in um pa hey man everything hey the lord is bringing forth his judgment 
Like I read in Ezekiel 12 and 21, man. The Lord said this proverb, what is this proverb that's in Israel, man? That's saying the, the vision, the days is prolonged. The vision is for a fall of time. No, man. Okay? No, man. <clears throat> Habakkuk 1 and 5. <clears throat> This is Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. <clears throat> it reads, Behold, ye among the heathen, talking to you Israelites, you Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indian Haitians, behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe, though it be told to you, man. Okay? Telling it to you, man. You would not listen, though. Why? Because Jake is hard-headed, man. sure that this is something that doesn't get brushed aside after uh, coronavirus is more contained is that data and there's a lack of data right now and this has been a long issue in the public health sector public health experts epidemiologists have long warned about this they've said that when a pandemic like this comes we do not have the structures in place it's piecemeal data collection specifically on race and ethnicity across the states there's uh, elements where the chain uh, of reporting uh, race and ethnicity gets broken down, whether it's the physician not writing it down because they're overwhelmed during a pandemic, or once it gets to the testing lab. Testing labs, a lot of them actually don't even have a space where um, the physician can write in ethnicity. So that leaves populations such as the Latino population potentially having nowhere to put their ethnicity when a physician is inputting that. So there's a lot of, uh, no, there's lots of lacking uh, data right now when it comes to this. And that's important. It's important to have those numbers because then the policymakers I was talking to, whether it's uh, local, state, or federal, say that only then once they have that information can they make decisions about where the federal funding is going, whether or not resources need to be redirected to different communities, to minority communities, if they're being hit harder. Uh, and so that's really the key uh, question right now. And states like New York actually told me that they hadn't been collecting the data up to this point and that they are going to on race and ethnicity moving forward. Also, Pennsylvania um, admitted that they just aren't collecting race and ethnic data at all, which was stunning. Laura, Van, Dr. Jones, thank you for your time today. Uh, come back, make sure. Go ahead, Van, go ahead. Just, just two things. One, one thing that every governor can do is to reduce the prison population. You can get people home safely. You can put ankle bracelets on them. That's going to be a big, big problem. All those people sitting there in jails are going to get sick and bring that back out. And another thing, rush the respirators to black communities. Rush the mass to black communities. You already know where it's going to blow up. Let's get there first. All right, I'm going to get these precepts. I'm going to close out. This is Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 11. Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh power, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee, neither shall my eyes spare, neither will I have any pity. A third part of thee shall die with pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee, and I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw a sword after them. Thus shall my anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I, the Lord Yahweh, have spoken it in my zeal, when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will waste. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. And we are what? Astonishment. Verse 15. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and instruction and an, inst and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee when I shall execute judgment in thee in anger and in fury. And in the furious rebukes, of the Lord Yahweh have spoken it, man. So you see these things happening, man, because the Lord is pissed off, man, with you Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitians, man. And it's going to continue, man, until two thirds 
And he said his anger shall rest, man. Meaning he's going to consume all two thirds of Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian Haitians, man. Break, we're going to talk with you about the stimulus package, about what you've called the corporate slush fund, that $500 billion, and how it will be monitored. But I want to ask you about another area of your district, which also goes to you as a, a Congress member dealing with. Pri Yo, we ain't want that don't matter. Hey, so Lord Woodlands Edifying, got to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim Yahawashah, Bahashim Rika Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who are well, who teach well, in a sincere salutation to all the arguing, pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the hopeful elect. And shalom to the Akwaf who are listening and learning, the few sisters who are listening and learning. Lord, we're edifying to next time I say shalom. I got one more precept. Micah 2 and 10. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Shalom.